Well, good day, Max here again. Welcome back to the shop. So, in this video, we just diversify away from our shed building videos as we have a little job come in from a friend of mine, uh, Glenn. He runs Heliart Fabrication and Welding just down the road a bit. So, that's his business. He helps me out a fair bit. I help him out. That's how we work. So, yeah, we have a piece of 50mm black bar, yay long, and we have to turn a radius on the end of it. So we'll go through the steps involved, um, and we get to have a play with our ball turner. And we also had a few stickers turn up in the mail, so I have the sticker board just temporarily relocated behind me for now, and we'll swing around and have a look. Okay, so as you can see the board's filling up. Not much room left, a couple of inches down the bottom. So, what have we got here? We've had the Nackler's Workshop. That's Paul from over in the UK. He's got a good little channel going. This might pay to go and check him out. Then we've got John's Workshop over in Scotland. John's got a nice little Harrison lathe there. And he's currently um, machining up the adapters to fit a DRO on his little milling machine. And of course Aaron, these are both Aaron's channels. The DCT Design Creativity Channel, that's more of his um, CNC side. And Aaron Engineering is more of his manual machining side. So a few guys there worth checking out. Always good to support the smaller channels. Remember everyone started small. Even the big guys over in the US. No. If you're not on there and want to be on there, just flick us an email. So we've got a little job to do here. We've got a piece of 50 millimeter black bar, and what we have to do is machine a 50 mil, well, a 25 millimeter uh, radius on the end of it. So we just got it set up in the four jaw. We can't get it back up against the chuck anymore because the throat on the in the spindle is not large enough. It's only a 40 millimeter spindle and being 50 millimeter bar, 50 don't go into 40. So we've got it overhanging and because it's black bar it's never going to run true. So what we do is we just clock up in, in four locations. I'll bring you around and get a closer look. So we just use uh, our chuck jaws as a basic indicator. So we just gives us four positions there. So starting on one jaw, so we're, we're approximately zero on here. We come around half a turn and we're within a bull's roar of zero. This is a metric indicator too, so it's 0.01 millimeter graduations. So that's pretty good. We come around 90 degrees, we're yep, you know, in the vicinity of 0.1 under, come around 180, and we're in that same vicinity again. So, piece of old black bar, it's not too bad. So what we're going to have to do to machine the radius on the end, we are going to have to mount a steady rest. So we'll put a steady rest in probably back here. So we'll have to just machine in a, a band for the steady rest. And you can see the amount of overhang, it's probably 500mm overhang, 400mm overhang, which will present some issues because we're not going to put a centre hole in. So we'll show you how we get around that. Okay, so we have our revolving centre mounted in. This is just a ring on there from a previous job. And we're using a 16mm nut. We slip that in there, and it should be enough just to ease the chatter so we can machine our band for the steady rest. Now, if you have a, uh, a tailstock chuck, well, this is where you'd use it. <laughs> no. Anyway, we haven't, we still have to make one. So, let's put our steady rest band in. So, we're going to use our ball turner to do the radius, so, we need to calculate an approximate distance back to machine the 
area for the steady rest. So we set our ball turner in an approximate position, a little bit of clearance to the steady rest, and I think we'll get away with the steady rest being there. So we'll just mark it, put a chalk line, probably either, either side. So what I can do now is machine either side of that chalk line and that will be our steady rest band. Should go okay and we've supported as we've seen just in the previous clip. Uh, we're using a nut on the centre. So here's an issue you'll always come across when you play around with black bar. And it makes it worse in this case because we can't have a centre in the end. So what we've got, we've got this end running true. Now this is the end we're working, we have to do our radius feature in, so that's critical. Now when we go up the other end of the bar, she's a different story. There's a good three millimetres of run out in that, if not a tad more. Now, there's a way we can correct that. We can't use the jaws as they are to correct it because it will load up the bar and throw the other end out because of the bend in the bar. So what, we, what we're going to do is we'll just machine a very small steady band on the end. We'll put our thick steady on the end and then we'll offset in the chuck we have to pick the right spot, the right two jaws, which will be uh, not those two. Okay, we okay. These two jaws here are the worst, have the worst run out. So that means this bar has to come across to me. Now. If we move the bar across with the jaws, as soon as we tighten the jaws back up, it's going to throw that end way out. So what we do, on the, on the two, because the bar will end up cocked in the jaws. So what we have to do is we have two thin copper strips. We put those in, one there, and one on the underside up there. This will allow the bar to sit slightly offset at an angle in the jaws, and we can still tighten the jaws up and it will have influence on that end, but it will be very minimal. It's better than it running out like it is there. Now she's miles out there. I mean, there's no need for me to do it for what this thing does, but we'll just go through the procedure and show you anyway, because you will come across it and you will have troubles, especially if you're not allowed to put a center in the end of it. Now we're only turning this at 300 RPM because of the run out. Shakes the lathe around a bit if we go any faster. Just a very light cut coming back the other way. That's all we need. So you can see the 
we didn't have any major issues with chatter there and the nut trick has done its job so now we can put our steady rest on here and we'll readjust the chuck Okay, so we'll head up the other end now. Okay, so we've marked an X for the worst of our high and lows on two opposite jaws. So the way the bar is lying at the moment as compared to the axis of the lathe, it's lying on an angle like that because it's bent. Now we have to bring it around straight. So that means we can still solidly we can still sorry we can still solid, solidly clamp on this jaw and the opposing jaw and these two jaws here we have to slacken off and these are the two jaws we put our thin copper strips in and they're only thin because the bar is going to be sitting cocked at an angle in those jaws so if we try to tighten down over the full length of the jaw it's going to throw our tailstock end of the bar right out. So, we'll slack it off the jaw. We'll just put one shim in in the front. And the same with the other side. could actually offset these shims, uh, uh, which we may do, we'll see how it looks once we get it set up a bit closer. So now I can slap it off on this jaw, tighten up on this one. It's actually not too bad. It's looking pretty good there. We're out still a fair way the other way, so we'll just bring it across this way a bit. Now we've moved it in both directions. We're going to have to do the same thing again, put copper under the jaw just to narrow the, con the contact footprint of the jaw. So I'll go and dig out two more little shims. Okay, so I've got two more shims. That's actually looking very good. Start her up and we'll have a look. A little bit quicker. So doing it that way, we've trued up the, we've averaged out everything on the bar, 
we haven't loaded up the tailstock end with the flex or anything like that. We can pull our tailstock back now. And don't forget to catch our nut. And we have our steady rest in position at the end there. Okay, here's a closer shot of our shim setup. So if we put the lathe back into gear, switch on, try and get a shot from the top. Looking at the uh, air gap there, I mean, there's nothing in that that's worth worrying about. I'm not even going to bother to indicate that. Now that's how you average out a bar, a bent bit of black bar. So we had to swing our compound around out the way as we were getting clearance issues with the steady rest. So now we can go and turn our steady band. just have to go a little bit deeper with the cut as we have two areas 180 degrees apart that haven't cleaned up. We'll take another cut. That's looking good there. So we'll shift our steady wrist down to this location from up the end and we'll get our ball turner set up. Okay, that's our ball turner set up. So this will turn us our 25mm radius. So we'll set you back in the cradle and we'll get turning. Okay, a little bit of chatter will slow the lathe down.
So we're doing a 20 thou depth of cut. So every major graduation on here, from there to there, is 10 thou. <coughs> so we're getting, she's forming up quite nicely. And we'll continue on. I think with our final cut, we'll up the RPM a bit. Um, at the moment, we're on. Uh, 420 RPM. I'm going to run a bit of flood coolant on this. Uh, just the chips are getting a bit warm when they hit your hand. Had to do a steady rest adjustment then, hence that bit of chatter. Okay, that's looking all right. That's looking very good. I think we got one. Just to get the last few thou out, we'll just, just take one more finished pass. Okay, that's our finished ball down to size, 50 millimeter diameter, and polished up. I didn't film any of the final polishing because that's boring. So the customer can have this now. It's going to be a part of a dolly for some um, copper work that he's going to be, uh, be doing, so we wanted a um, nice polished end on it. Came out well. <laughs> 